How are you guys this morning? Good. Good to see you. Hi, Henrietta. Hi. Hello. Hi, Uncle. Good, man. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. I'm going to fix your light for you. Going home and getting the ladder, right? Yes. <laughs> 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 well, Uncle called me that yesterday, right? Or day before yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he called me and said, Hi. Uh, me and Henrietta are going to be in Fallon on Friday and Saturday. Can we come down there on Sunday? <laughs> you know what I didn't do? I didn't say, oh, let me pray about it. <laughs> no, the Holy Spirit right then. He said, yeah, good. Amen. So I believe Henrietta's got something good for Uncle, why don't you come up here just for a second, please? Oh. And then you, then you can uh, introduce your lovely lady. Praise the Lord. Yep. I don't need the microphone. I have a long one. Um, I'm always so grateful for for your fellowship and friendship, Pastor Matt. And uh, Pastor Henrietta does not need much introduction because she's been here before. You guys, you all know how she she's a. Uh, my favorite woman of God. Hallelujah. Uh, say that too, because, because she really means a lot to my, to my family and myself. And she's a missionary in the country I grew up in, in Cameroon. And she's here this morning. And without further ado, I think we're just going to let her. Okay. This can be a blessing Amen. to the church. Amen. Amen. Pastor Henrietta. All right. Hallelujah. to be with you this morning. Amen. 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 And um, I believe God is here with us this morning and is going to speak to us. us. Your word encourages us. 
your word hears us. Holy Spirit, I know you are here. For you are the leader in your church, the builder of your people. I ask you to speak to us this morning. Reveal Jesus in every heart. Lord, warm our hearts that before we leave this place this morning, we shall have the assurance that we have from you. Yes, God. Have your way, Lord, and let you alone be glorified. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Um, this morning, I will be sharing with us what the Lord laid in my heart. See, God is awesome. <clears throat> While we're driving here, when we got up in the morning, it's like we are not going to make it. The snow was so much, and it's like we're not going to make it. But thank God for Richard, whose faith was so strong, and he said we're going to make it. <laughs> and he said, I've checked and cross-checked, and the road is clean, we're going to make it. And I give God the glory because of his faith. I was already shivering, and uh, <laughs> I course wife was saying, you can't make it, it's too much outside. Mm. And I was like, oh, let uncle not accept this. Mm -hmm. Let him not accept, because if he says no, we're not going to go. But I was glad when he said we're going, and I was so happy, and here we are, to God be glory. And while we're driving in the car, I had Richard say, God gave me this scripture. I kept quiet because it's the same scripture God gave me to share with us this morning. From Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. When he read it, I said nothing. But I just kept quiet because I knew he would be shocked by the time I will be reading it here. Because I know God is actually speaking to all of us. And God wanted just to confirm it through his mouth that this is what he wants me to share with you this morning. And from the scripture, Hebrews chapter 13, 5 and 6, I titled my message, Living in His Presence. I read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. 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 Can I hear you shout amen? amen. amen. <laughs> let your attitude, let your lifestyle, be without covetousness. Our natural man wants more and more and more. Mm -hmm. We never get satisfied. Mm -hmm. We are never content. The more you have, the more you want. And you discover the more you have, the more worried you are. Mm -hmm. yes. The more properties you have, the more scared you are. Mm -hmm. Material things don't bring satisfaction. That's right. That's right. They don't bring joy. That makes you feel you're happy. I have much. But in the real sense, you're scared. Because more you have, more trouble you have. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Bible calls it the deceitfulness of riches. Because he deceives you to make you feel that in abundance you will survive. But you don't survive because you have so much. You survive because you have the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. That's right. What you need is not more things. Mm -hmm. right. What you need is more faith. Yes. To know that he is with you. Amen. He says, <coughs> let this be your
your attitude. Be content with such things as you have because the life of a man is not in abundance of what he possesses. In America, they tell you that your value is in your money. Yeah. When you value your house, value everything you have, you say, this is my worth. But that is a lie. Yes. Yeah. Because the house you bought, the cars you bought, the things you bought in your house cannot define your value. Amen. That's right, right? You define the value of what you have. But the world tells you, this is your value. So when you don't have enough, you lose your joy. You lose your happiness. You say, I don't have anything. I want nothing. That is a lie. Because the world had conditioned your mind to believe yes. that your worth is in what you have. But that's not the truth. Your worth is not in what you have. Your worth is in who you have. Amen. If I have God on my side, I worth more than millions yes. in the world. That's right. Be content with what you have because your life is not in what you have. And he says, this is what the Lord said. For he said, I will never leave you. Yes. Now, if God is with me all the time, it means he will provide for me. When Adam in the Garden of Eden walked away from the word of God, the moment he walked away from the word of God, Though he was still in the garden, the Bible said they discovered they were naked. They were still in the garden of abundance. They were in abundance, but they were naked. Because in the real sense, what they needed was in the garden. What they needed was the presence of God. Amen. The glory of God Amen. was their covering, was their security, was their satisfaction, was their glory. In the presence of God, they had security. In the presence of God, they were satisfied. Once that presence left, there was emptiness. Once that presence left, they were scared of life. The greatest treasure is to have God yes. on your side. Amen. Amen. To have him with you. Because wherever he is, he makes things different. The Bible tells us that when God took the children of Israel out of Egypt, he did not lead them through the normal way that would have given them assurance of provision, assurance of food, assurance of security, but God led them through the wilderness. Can you imagine that? In the wilderness, there was hunger. In the wilderness, there was no security. In the wilderness, there were blockages on the way. In the wilderness, there were serpents and scorpions. In the wilderness, there was cold. In the night, in the wilderness, there was heat in the day. But the Bible says that God led them through the wilderness. Amen. Why would God want to lead them through such a horrible way? The sweet part of it, the Bible says, and God went with them and became a pillar of cloud in the day to protect them from the heat of the sun. And God was to them a pillar of light in the night to protect them from the wind, the cold wind. Isn't that sweet? Yes. So it's not how comfortable the environment is when God is not there 
Even a comfortable environment can be scary. Mm -hmm. When God is not there, even abundance can turn to hunger. That's right. That's what Apostle Paul, talking to us from the book of Hebrew, he said, so that we may say boldly, the Lord is my helper. Mm -hmm. If yeah. God does not help me, no man can help me. That's right. Yeah. My money cannot help me because there comes a time when money fails. Yes. There comes a time family fails. There comes a time friends run away. But God said, I will never leave you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No matter the situation, no matter the condition of your life, you can have one thing as an assurance. He said he will never leave me. Yeah. When everybody walks away from me, I have one thing to console me. Mm. I have God with me. Yes. Yes. If I have God with me, he will make provision with their speed. David writing Psalm 23. I believe when he was writing Psalm 23, he was going through most horrible thing in his life. His life was being haunted by Saul. He was hungry. He was lonely. He had no place to call home. But in the midst of that, he could see God. Amen. And that's why he boldly wrote and said, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because where God is, you don't lack anything. Amen. When God is there, he becomes your protection. Yes. When God is there, he becomes your help. When God is there, he makes a way where there is no way. When God is there, even little can accomplish much. Because he is God who can create out of nothing. Amen. He is God who can make a way where there is no way. Yes. That's right. And that is why the greatest treasure of a Christian is the presence of God. Amen. Because God is with me, I am not afraid. Amen. Because God is on my side, I am not afraid of tomorrow. Because God is on my side, I'm not afraid of death. Because I know there comes a time when friends and family will say goodbye. Mm -hmm. We don't know what eternity is like. Go alone. But because I am walking with God here, I have this assurance that when I'm moving into eternity, He is there with me. He's not a God. That sticks to you when you are in the war and leaves you in the grave. He is a God who sticks with you yesterday when you didn't know him. Mm -hmm. Today right. that you know him and tomorrow right. that you don't know. Amen. A songwriter says, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know him who holds tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know the one that holds tomorrow, I am not afraid of what tomorrow <clears throat> will bring. Many of us live in the fear of tomorrow. But I want to encourage you this morning, forget about tomorrow, look unto him. Mm -hmm. That's why in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2, he says, looking unto Jesus. <laughs> Don't look at the distractions in the world. The world has so many distractions, so many things to scare you, so many things to put you in fear. But he said, don't look at them. Have this assurance. Don't be worried about what you don't have. Be content with what you have. The question is this, what is it that I have? The only thing I am sure that I have is God. Because the Bible says money has wings. It can fly away. Yeah, it can come into your house today, tomorrow, flies away. 
and you live in the past. Oh, I remember I used to. Be. You know there are many people that live in the past. They keep remembering where they used to be. That past had passed. It may never come back. But God said, be content with what you have now. What do I have now that cannot leave me tomorrow? It's only God. And because I have God, I have to live a peaceful life. A life full of joy. A life filled with thanksgiving. Praising Him at every moment. Because He knows where I am going. He said with boldness I can say, the Lord is my helper. Can he help you today and abandon you tomorrow? No way. <clears throat> the Bible says that while we were yet in sin, Christ died Hallelujah. for us. Hallelujah. If Jesus did not wait for you to be perfect before he died, he died while you were yet a sinner. He came on the street through men looking for you and brought you to himself. You have this assurance that he can never leave you. If I have God, I have everything. If you read John chapter 6, story that tells us that Jesus saw the multitude coming to him. And he turned to Philip and said, where can we buy bread? to feed these people. And Philip said, even if we buy 200 penny worth of bread, these people cannot even have little each of them. But the Bible said that Jesus knew what he wanted to do. 5,000 men, women and children, not counted in the number. 5,000 men, and Andrew said, there is a lot here that have five loaves of bread and few fishes. And they said, what are these for this number of men? But Jesus knew what he wanted to do. We live in a time we think we are leading God. We have a mindset that we tell God what he wants to do. Because men can rewrite the Bible, change some texts in it. They have the thing, they have the thought. We are the one in charge. We can change the minds of people. We can control people. But I want you to know the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What God is demanding from us is that we should focus on Him, not on the things He gave us. What is it you have God did not give you? This body you have, you didn't create it. You don't even have power over your own body. You don't. You didn't choose your face. You go to the mirror, you look at yourself. That body God gave it to you. You may not like your body, but it's your body. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I don't like my body, I don't like the way I am. But that is the body God gave you. But your body is not the real you. Your body is only your house. Yes. The real you is the spirit and your soul yes. that we want to come out of this body. Amen. But what is important is this. You should not focus on that thing you have that you call body. Because it's growing up, it's growing old, it's aspiring. When your spirit is being renewed each day as you walk with God. Amen. There comes a time the body gets tired. And you get tired of living in your body. And you feel like coming out of your body. Because your body is like a load. You don't like it anymore. You are tired of your body. But you have lived in that body as long as you know on this earth. And one day, you walk out of that body. And you look at it lying there. And you see your real self. And you look at the body. You have spent all your time and money taking care of that body. 
And now you are leaving that same body because your real person is tired of that body. But you spend your time worrying about what to eat to feed that body. That's why Jesus said the life is more than food. Don't worry about what to eat. Don't worry about what to wear because your life worth more than food and your clothing. Worry about his presence. Convert his presence. Let the joy of being in his presence be your portion. Because when God is there, he will make all things possible for you. Amen. When God is there, he will make a way where there is no way. Amen. Jesus said to, to, to the disciples, tell the men to sit down in John chapter 6. Why would they sit down over five loaves of bread? If you were there, you will walk out. Because you will not believe that that five loaves of bread will be enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's why we are called to walk by faith and yes. not by sight. Yes. They just shall live by faith, not by sight. Civilization has not helped us much. Mm -hmm. Supposed to have advanced our knowledge of God. Supposed to have advanced our faith. But sometimes it's like it is advancing our mind, but not our spirit. Yeah, right. yeah. We are losing our faith. We are losing our spiritual life, holding on the things that disappear. Jesus said to the 5,000 men, sit down. What are you sitting down for? For five loops. The Bible never said that Jesus multiplied the baskets of bread. They never saw baskets of bread. They only saw five loaves. And Jesus divided the five loaves after giving thanks. And get to the disciples and say, go out and share to the people. The people sat down and one by one the disciples shared only five loaves. That is to say, the more they were sharing, the more the bread was multiplying. The five loaves never finished until everybody ate to their own satisfaction. And the Bible said, after they had eaten, they gathered the remains and they had 12 baskets. Mm. It was after they had eaten that Jesus said, gather the remains. What is God trying to show us? We survive with this assurance that he is dead. He can give us our daily bread. Yes. But sometimes we are worried. Not only we are worried about our lives, we are worried about our children are born. Is it true? Yes. We are not only worried about ourselves, we are worried about our children that are not yet born. We are worried about the tomorrow we don't even see. We are not sure we are going to see. This morning, God is calling us. My presence is all you need. Because I will be your helper and I will help you. When the need arises, I will be there for you. I will help you. Yes. He helped Israel in their journey to the promised land. Mm -hmm. When Egyptians came chasing after them, an Egyptian said, the wilderness has covered them. They cannot escape. We are going to destroy them. And the Israelites said, Moses, why did you bring us here to die? Mm -hmm. And Moses turned to God. Because Moses knew that even in the way that is, God was dead. Mm -hmm. Moses turned to God and God said to him, Tell the Israelites to be calm. For the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. In their fear, God was fighting. They 
didn't know God was fighting. They saw the chariots of the Egyptians coming with force. But what they did not know is that though they were running, but they were not advancing. Because God held them back. They were struggling with winds. The children of Israel did not see the wind. They did not see the hand of God holding the chariots back. They knew the chariots were coming, but they did not know that God was holding them. Stand still. That is often what you don't know. Yes. That the enemies you fear are being held captive by the power of God. Amen. Amen. The things you are scared of are already being taken in control by God himself. Thank you. Thank you God. The Bible tells us the Red Sea was before them. They knew they would not escape. But because the presence of God was there, what happened? He opened the door. The sea divided and then passed. I want to tell you this morning, the Lord is your helper, and he will help you. Amen. If you believe you say amen. 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 If you believe you say better, amen. 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 The Lord is my helper. Amen. amen. His presence is all you need. Amen. He will supply all that you need yes. according to his riches in glory through you, Christ Jesus. Amen. Not according to the provision of the government, but according to his riches in glory Amen. through Christ Jesus. Amen. He will provide. When he sent Israel to go to the wilderness to pick the manna, he said to them, pick for each day's portion. Don't pick more than you can eat for a day. Why? Because he wanted them to live not in their reservation, but to live daily trusting his presence. That's good. That's often the way we live. We live trusting our reservation. We don't live trusting his daily provision. We believe he provided for us yesterday, but not today. We believe he cared for me yesterday, but I'm not sure he's going to do it again. I'm sure God must, God must have been tired of me. He doesn't get tired of you. You must think, oh, I'm old, I've, been, I've, I've worried God all these years. I think he loves it. He loves it when we worry him. He loves it when we keep crying out to him. Amen. He loves it when we keep telling him, I am not able. You are my strength. Yes. Yes. I cannot help myself. I know you can help me. You are my father. Yes. Amen. He loves it when we look up to him as our father. When we tell him, I don't look up to men, I look up to you. Because he created us to look up to him. He didn't create us to look up to people. Because people can always fail you. But he cannot fail you. <laughs> People can always disappoint you, but he cannot disappoint right. you. Yeah. This morning, I want you to go home with this assurance. I will worry for nothing because God is my helper. Yeah. He is my helper. He is my helper. I have God with me because I have God with me. Don't I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Fear no evil. Though he allowed me to go through pain, I know it is for a purpose. God never said he will remove suffering. But he said, I will not leave you. He never said you will not go through luck. But he says, in the luck, you will see my face. We love calling him Jehovah Jireh. But do you know how that name came up? Because Abraham was in a serious trial. <coughs> when God asked him, give me the only thing you love. The only thing Abraham loved. The only son. The son of his old age. His strength. His future. God said, give me that son. In agony, in pain, Abraham still said, I will give you. You gave me the son in my old age. You raised my body. You raised the, the, the body of my wife 
to have this child. And I also believe, even if I kill this child, you are able to raise him up again. Amen. In that faith, Abraham was ready to sacrifice Isaac. When he was lifting the knife to kill Isaac, God said, stop. Don't kill the child. Now I know you fear me. Now I know you love me. Now I know you respect me. You look up to me. The person we respect is the person we look up to. The person we know, he holds our survival in his hand. He holds our future in his hand. It's not about what man can do. I'm not afraid of what man can do to me because I know if God says yes, it is yes. And when God says no, it is no. And nobody can control the Almighty. He's in charge of everything. He controls everybody. So I can say boldly, what man, what can man do to me? Man can do nothing to me. If God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. If God is for me, who can be against you? If God is fighting my battle, who can win? If God has said yes in my life, nobody can say no. Yeah. Right. This morning, be strengthened in your faith to know that God is your position. God is your helper. I have God. I may say I have nothing. But if I have God, I have everything. Amen. Because when you have God, He can give you beyond your dream. Yes. He can give you beyond what you want. This morning, I would like you to stand on your feet and let's talk to God. The Lord is my helper. And I will fear what man shall do to me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what the environment will do to me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what my enemies are planning against me. He will help me. He will deliver me. The Lord who delivered Daniel from the lion's death will help you. I want you to open your mouth and talk to him. Just pray and thank him for his promise. Thank him for his word to you. He said, I will never leave you. Talk to him. Talk to him. I want to hear you pray. Give him, roll your problems to him. Give him your bodies. Refuse to bear them. The devil wants you to bear them. The devil wants you to, to bear the load of your body. Say, no, I give you my body. I give you my cares and worries. I give you my fears. I roll it to you, Jesus. I give it to you. You that took my place and died on the cross of Calvary. I give you my body. I roll it to you. You are my helper. I am not afraid of anything. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and worship Him. Worship Him. Give Him praise. Give Him praise is your helper. Give Him praise is your helper. He said, I will never leave you. That is His word. I will go with you. No matter where you go, I will be there for you. I will deliver you. I will provide for you. I will heal you. I will defend you. I will make a way where there is no way. Give Him praise. He is your God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, our God. We worship, we worship you. We worship you, our God. You are awesome. You are great. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. We celebrate your majesty. Hallelujah. You are awesome. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, our God. You are great, our God. Oh, hallelujah. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. 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 You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to 
see God who is lifted above your life challenges. He is lifted above your cares and your worries. He is lifted above your sickness. See him on the cross and receive your healing this morning. Receive your liberation this morning. Receive your freedom this morning. Jesus paid for your help. Jesus paid for your help. So they will no more be accounting to sickness. Receive your healing this morning. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Say, Lord, by your stripes I was healed. I received my healing. I receive it. Proclaim the word of faith. Say to yourself, I receive it. It's mine. I, re I receive it. I say no to sickness. I refuse sickness. I shake it off my body. I receive a new body. I receive a new strength. Receive it this morning. It is your portion. Child of God, receive it this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift up your voice. Lay your hands on your chest. That place where you have to be, I'm going to pray this morning. Thank you, God. Your presence. Just lay your hands upon that place where you have pain. I'm going to speak to that pain to leave your body. The Lord has given us the opportunity to receive our healing. The Lord is your helper. He will help you to exercise your faith. He will help you to wake up where you have fallen as long. He will help us. He will help you to rise again. He will wake you up and give you a new zeal. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. I speak to that pain in your body. And I say, live now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your spirit of infirmity. Hiding in that body. Claiming that body as your place of habitation. That is not your place. That body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I stand by the authority that is in the word of God. And I command you to leave right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus. It is your portion. It is the children's bread. It belongs to you. Receive it. Lift up your hands and thank you. Say, Father, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I know you are here. Lift up your hands and give it thanks. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father, thank you. For the word you have given us this morning is life and has weakened every spirit. And we keep us alive. We keep us strong. We keep us seeing you everywhere. As we drive, you are with us. As we stay home, you are with us. As we go to work, you are with us. You will always make a way for your people where there is no way. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the glory. Can I hear the church say a big amen? Amen. amen. Thank you for allowing us to give. And Lord, I pray that you put, right now, we understand tithes. But this morning, Lord, we want to understand offerings. So I pray you put that number in our heart, that amount in our minds right now, in Jesus' name. And that's what we do. We thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
solidify it with uh, eating the bread and drinking the wine. Consider the body of Christ. Lord, we consider right now our brothers and sisters. Those that have been broken by this life. And right now, God, we consider them. And Lord, we don't turn our back on them. We don't turn a blind eye to them. We thank you, Lord. We do what we're supposed to do and what we can do and what you say to do. Right now, Lord, we, we uh, ask you, Lord, and we thank you for healing our bodies this morning. Yes. Yeah. Thank now, you, God. We, we are excited about you healing our bodies. Thank yes. you, God. We receive that stuff. That is your grace. It is the children's bread. And right now, Lord, by your stripes, we are healed. Amen. And so we take this bread understanding that that's the truth. Amen. And Lord, all this provision is is given to us because of the cross. We thank you for the blood you shed on that cross, Lord, and the blood that flowed from your side, blood and water. And we thank you, Lord, for doing this for us because, because Lord, without that, we wouldn't have access to the Father. Our, right. We'd still be in our sins. Yes. And so, Lord, I thank you for forgiving our sins. Thank in Jesus' you. name. Praise the Lord. I read something this week. You can tell how popular a church is by how many people come on Sunday morning. You can tell how popular the pastor of the evangelist is by those who come on Sunday night. You, you know how popular Jesus is by those who come to the prayer meetings. Ooh. Amen. That's good. Ooh. That got me. I, I'm telling you, man. That, that just, Not true. And so, I understand that God has spoken to us to spend more time in His presence. And here comes a word today. Amen. What do you have? You have the presence of God. And as you spend time in His presence, you spend time before Him, you spend time in His Word, that builds us in faith and strengthens us to walk this walk God has caused us to have. I praise the Lord. So God, we thank you for allowing us to come here this morning. You've got us here through snow, blizzard, we're just like the mailman. We thank you for it, Lord. I pray that you take us home safe and sound now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Tonight? Tonight we're coming here. Right? No, I don't want to come to the house. A few moments. <laughs>